Can't buy from anywhere else because I'm still currently suspended. Now it's got an engine management light. But if it works, why fix it? Uh, started up, swinging that. Hi there, it's Jason at Ferro Motors. It's a bit of plastic dip. Budger. I think Dan's uh, upsetting the locals. I'll just buy whatever, whatever sells well. It's the best car bought, best car sold. Do you know what, it's tricky actually, we've got three options here. Good morning, welcome to another Barra Motors Weekly. It's Monday, heading into work. It's about six minutes to nine, so I am running behind, uh, just adding to my levels of stress. And uh, at 9.30, I have a Motor Trade Mentors podcast. Um, this week with Martin, can't think of his surname off the top of my head, um, of Rasmoco, or Rasmoco, I think. Um, I will put the link in the description because that podcast will be out by then, by the time you're watching this, I should say. Um, and what else is on the agenda? So that would be 9.30 to say 10.30ish, we get to have a chat and kind of kick the week off. Then I've got to film a couple of different cars, so hopefully I can be not that ADHD and just get on with it. Got a few interesting cars I might try and buy at G3. Um, then can't buy from anywhere else because I'm still currently suspended and um, yeah I can't think too much else I decided over the weekend had a bit of an epiphany well perhaps on the Friday or the Saturday that we need an office assistant um, begrudgingly we need an office assistant I don't want to be hiring more people we've only got like 30 or 40 cars in stock and we've already got six members of staff in the Barra Motors team uh, but if we want to I guess the Barrow Motors and Cars Bought For More team if we want to be doing more Cars Bought For More we either need someone driving again and um, someone running errands instead of the valeters coming off of valeting cars in order to go and run MOTs and stuff because that slows down the sales process and in a sense I said it on a podcast the other day you may not have seen last week's um, dealer chat I was saying I almost need a PA at this point because emails taking telephone calls all that sort of stuff I've put myself down for so many different videos and podcasts and things like that which I absolutely love doing that uh, I'm just walking in the door to a load of stress every morning because I got emails to reply to diary appointments and you know stuff like that to book and posting merchandise, I'm awful at that. People make an order for purchasing the merchandise, I'm really slow off the mark. So, yeah, I put an Indeed thing out and we've had quite a response. So, I guess I have to have a look through those today. Um, yeah, and I don't know what else is going on really. Have we got any cars going out or not? Jason came in yesterday. Um, he was coming in to do a viewing on a smart car that we got from G3 and turns it had gone to MIT and it's had its MIT pass and everything so he was like yeah come on on Sunday turns out it was still at the MIT centre it wasn't at the garage so that was a bit of a nuisance but while he was there um, funnily enough the owner of the MOT centre or the operator manager of the MOT centre was interested in one of our Range Rover Sports and said, is anyone around on Sunday? And I said, you can go and see Jason at 11. I'm sure we could have figured something out between us if I'd known it wasn't there. Anyway, we might have sold the Range Rover Sport and uh, yeah, that is what happened on Sunday. God knows what's going on this morning. I'm gonna arrive there pretty much, have a quick catch up with everyone, grab a cup of tea and I'll go and sit down and do my podcast. Super job, will do. Alright, thanks a lot. Cheers, bye bye. Morning. Right, podcast done. Brews on the go. 
don't know where everyone is, to be honest. Uh, Jason's out there doing a walk around video. Adrian's cussing in the uh, workshop. We've got a Golf GTD. We did anything with that, but it kept having a water leak and then uh, now it's got an engine management light. So I think they're just looking at it. I don't think it's anything too crazy, but it's just a, a tricky water link to, water link? Water leak to track down. Um, and then we've got Steph working on a 2012 Ford Cougar. It's been out of the farm for a long time because they need a power steering rack. Well, the power steering works most of the time, but it just kept as just an annoying electrical issue. So he's looking into that. I've uh, no idea where Dan is. Oh, uh, Valeta's Mark and Charlie weren't there when I walked through. I've got a feeling they've taken. Yeah, Ford Ranger Seeker, which is now sold to Ford in Trowbridge because it had a recall on the rear diff or something. So, what? I guess it's probably just a sensor because they only want it for a couple of hours. So, um, they've gone to drop that there. I don't know if they're waiting or what. Uh, just watching that motorbike like, because there's a fair chance of how like stupidly he was riding, he would have crashed. Um, yeah, done the podcast. Got to film some other videos now. And that's it. So, yeah. Go and see Adrian, find out why he's cussing. And he's hobbling again. I guess it could be his knee or his back, or frankly, he's taken out the farm and putting down. <laughs> Am I having fun? Loads of fun. Yes, please. Uh, mind you, I copped this up like three times. <laughs> I did, I loved it. Uh, it's got these lovely flush handles and then you press the button it comes out and because I pressed the button to lock it rather than the, the handle it wouldn't pop out so twice I did that so if I lock it now I don't think well they will typical they do it now I'm not recording <laughs> and then what was the other thing I got wrong something else I got wrong as well so I had to start it again twice <laughs> still we get there in the end it's done now yeah. I know because I got off and I forgot that my leg doesn't bend in one direction. <laughs> so it reminded me, I think, as he walked in, oh yeah, let a few expletives off. <laughs> Keyhole surgery. You can only see it with a mirror. <laughs> Whoever designed this one, we don't like people who've got to work on it. Good morning, it's Tuesday, I'm running late again, standard. Uh, today I'm driving Sophie's absolutely filthy. BMW. I mean, it's my BMW really, but she uses it and I just pay for everything on it. So that's a good deal for me. Um, but not just that. So she's got a bit of a slow puncher, which we are going to get sorted today. Whether it needs a tyre or a puncher repair or bead seal or whatever. We're going to look at that. Look at the bloody sand in here. Why, why can't people just... Anyway, um... But a lot of you will sympathise with this situation as well. If I can hopefully show you. Five miles range. So I get in her car to do her a favour and there isn't even any fuel in it. Am I just a grouchy bugger? Should I be Mr Chivalrous? And be like, don't worry, I'll fill that back up for you as well as repairing it. Don't worry about paying me for the car. Don't worry about paying for the tax or insurance. I'll cover all of that as well. Some people might say that the only polite thing to do would be to ensure that there's some fuel in it for me to drive, but not me. I don't think that at all. Anyway, it's not the end of the world. Just thought I'd let you into some of my domestic bliss. Right, so I don't know how much footage we got yesterday. We need to have a bit of a planning session between me and the two editors now because uh, we be doing loads of stuff, as I've probably going on and on about in videos, um, podcasts, whatever. Toby is also off today filming with Dom of DB Details again, so 
this is him filming their third video. Um, so by the time you watch this, his second one will be out where he's done like a full detail on a really nice looking Audi RS Q3. So I'll put the link to that in the description, you can check that out. Um, but yeah, we're probably missing out on getting some of the uh, weekly stuff. And I can't get the CCTV to work very well in our media office, so we can't really keep an eye on what's happening when cars are arriving, when different cars are going in the workshop, so I need to sort that out. Um, but yeah, these weeklies are kind of getting a bit short, so you're going to see more of me just like waffling in the car. And yesterday was just very busy anyway, because I spent all of Sunday doing car sport for more replies. Quite a few of those came back through again on yesterday for me to sort out. Um, I had just general business emails, sponsors, um, what else did we have? My auction account that got suspended was reinstated, so I had to deal with that, that was all good. Um, I had a podcast to film yesterday, and this is why I currently have a job I have out for like an office assistant to take care of all the emails and stuff. I had bills to pay and whatever, and my uh, stress levels are going up again. I've just made work for myself, it's my own fault, but uh, yeah, you know when you have one of those days when you sort of start and you try and just plough for everything and you're going, you know, it's like you're sprinting through everything, you're not walking, and then you're like, right, what will I do next, and you look at the clock and it's like half three, and it feels like it should be like half ten, and you're just doing so much and being so busy, the day's flown by, and that's how I feel every day at the moment. So, um, yeah, we just need to get some extra help and it will all be good. Um, so, today I've got a few different cars I need to pick up. We've got to go and pick one up from James at Chop's Garage. It's only about an hour away. I think I'm going to go down and do that on. That's it telling me that my tyre pressure is low. Um, on Wednesday morning. Um, what else? What else? We've got one at BCA Bristol and. We've got one at Westbury as well, which I forgot I'd bought, to be honest. Um, so we're going to send Dan to BTA Westbury Wednesday. Today he's going up north somewhere to pick up an Audi A6. And I decided I'm just going to pay the £100 plus VAT to have the Cactus C4, Citroen C4 Cactus, delivered from Bristol to us. It obviously would be cheaper for us to do, and I could whip up there, but it's going to take me a couple of hours, and I realised, you know what, why am I thinking of even considering doing that when I could be doing other stuff? Um, so, yeah, I am basically, like, buying time for myself to get other things done, which is fine by me. Um, yeah, but I need to have a big staff meeting, I think, and get everything organised again, because we've got new staff, things have changed, some staff's left. Um, our kind of operating parameters system has changed a little bit, so yeah, lots to do this morning. I've got cars to buy at auction potentially, uh, videos to upload, videos to film, sponsors and things to get back to. Yeah, another busy day potentially. As I say, Toby's out, so I'll try and get some weekly footage as well. Anyway, I've waffled enough. I will catch you later on. Oh, good morning. How's your day going? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, kind of sucks. Whee! <laughs> no, it's not going too badly, to be honest. Yeah, so it's uh, been down farm for a little while, as it's had drive shaft, not drive shaft, sorry, um, steering rack issues. Uh, steering rack is now fixed. So it's now come to us for a nice deep clean, and then it's going to be sold from the garage. So no longer going to be a dead car at the farm. Or a lot of leads and stuff. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Before I started, there was a, 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 a lot of gak in there. There was a lot of gak, but yeah, time and perseverance, it's a little bit cleaner now. <laughs> what, end of day going to be sparkling? <laughs> oh God, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolute spit shine on it. And yet, it will go out the door before we know it. So yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> uh, responding to uh, a part exchange inquiry, well actually a tenner, a sales inquiry, guy wants to sell us an Audi all road. That's what I'm doing right now. I don't know whether to um, offer him a lot for it, 
or offering guide values. It's a nice car, 2016 Audi All-Road, sensible mileage. But it's a long way away using Leon C in Essex. But I think I'll just hedge my bets and go down the middle. And see what he says. So that's what I'm doing. I basically responded to inquiries. Well, how much do you reckon you could sell that for? If it like work? Well, it's the guide prices. We've got two guides. Cap, do you want me to show you? Which is that one. So Cap says we should pay 11.2 for it, sell it for 37.50. 11.2 if it's good. 10 grand average. Auto Trader, which I'll go to now, tells us we should pay a lot more for it. Well, not a lot more actually, for the customer view. So quite a bit more. But they also say we can sell it for quite a bit more. But caps like the, I suppose you call it the, the banker, it's the guaranteed value, whereas Auto Trader is kind of what the market's doing right now. So if we pay 12 grand for it and the market drops, we could not, we, there's a chance we couldn't get our money out of it. But it's obviously a nice car, we'll probably sell it very quickly. So I am going to offer him 11,500 just to be on the safe side. And there we go, see if he wants to go for it or not. So that's it, that's number one inquiry. I'll send that. Uh, so this one, we've got another inquiry if you visit a chat. Mm, these are all Mickey Mouse. Yeah, if you want to key old, use a better shot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I saw this, I don't know what the hell it is, but it looks like an advertising ploy. If you want to compete with other companies, you've got to act smart. Old is a better shot today because of traditional British shots, blah, 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 fact, blah, blah, blah. Fortunately, I know you remain in your old 20th century mentality. I am the best. But insulting China, who is better? I don't know what that means. But then blah, 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 blah. And then it goes on to say, I'm looking for a Toyota RAV4 you don't have in your stock if you phone and call me on this number. And I'm like, that looks a bit Mickey Mouse to me. From Fidelis, whoever they may be. She may be, he may be. So I'm just going to ignore that one because I think it's Mickey Mouse. And that's it. After that, I'm going to make sure the advertising is up together. I mean, you seem genuine. He obviously had the money, it's like a 40 grand electric car he wanted. But he can buy it also, and he's asking us if we would do it for him. Yeah. And he pays two grand to do it, but it's just it's just too much potential pitfall. Too many potential pitfalls. Because if he decides, oh, I don't like the colour, he's got no obligation to buy it, and suddenly we've got a 40 grand electric car on our portal. So, yeah, it's, it's just not, not something I want to get involved in, too risky. Uh, what else we got? Oh yeah, this is my favourite. So this guy, I can't, I could scarcely believe this. We got a car advertised for twenty eight thousand uh, pounds. Twenty seven nine nine five negotiable for this box. So would twenty thousand pounds be acceptable? Now, clearly, we're not going to give eight grand away. Um, so I said, that's in fact, that's less than we paid for it. So. I went back and said, no, that's not even trade price. And then he said, well, we buy any car, uh, say it's worth 15,000. It's like, well, go and buy it for we buy any car then. You can't buy it for we buy any car. That's what they'll buy it for and then sell it to the trade for seven or 8,000 pounds more. Idiot. So yeah, he got his, Joe actually responded to him as well saying, go and buy it for we buy any car. But yeah, we do get quite a few of them. Make sure our advertising is up together. Pretty sure, because I did it yesterday. These are obviously new cars that Joe's just bought. Oh, I did a video yesterday for that. And reduce the price. Trying to activate the flipping intercooler coolant pump. But these keep shutting themselves down. Yeah, it's just they they like to shut themselves down when you're in the middle of doing something. Stop. So I don't know if you can actually see on the camera, but these store cards are absolutely hounding. They're probably hounding 
good Ozzy. Joe has three wonderful dogs and he does allow them in his cars, hence the poor prints. But what we're going to do with these door cards is just blast G101 straight onto the door card, let it sit for a second, scrub everything away, get in all the nitty bitties with our detailing brushes, and then airline any other moisture out, wipe it all, and yeah, we shall show you the results once we're done. So as you can see, I've properly soaked the door card. Don't be scared. I will blow out any moisture afterwards. So yeah, we just let that sit for a second and then scrub away. And it'll be like a brand new door card. Now I just get my airline and a cloth, blast out all the moisture, get my cloth, dry up the surface. And good as new. Do excuse my ropey tornado gun, but if it works, why fix it? What are you saying, boys? So when I'm using the tornado gun to obviously blow out the moisture from all of these gaps and stuff, I'm also using it to blow out any debris that I can't reach with the hoover inside the door cart. Um, obviously we use it all over the car, so be able to feed it down here, blast it through here, get all of this gack and bullshit out of here, and yeah, just makes the job 10 times easier. So trying to feed your hoover hose down here, which, let's face it, doesn't always reach. So, tornado gun, definitely come in handy. Obviously, when I have the tornado gun, and I'm actually able to blow out the moisture from all of these gaps, if I didn't have a tornado gun, I probably wouldn't spray product directly on to the panel due to it can just seep down in between all these gaps and it could just, yeah, ruin things or make it a bit more difficult later on down the line over cleaning the vehicle. So instead, I'll just spray it straight onto my scrubber dubber and just scrub the surface that I want to be cleaned. But I say, tornado gun definitely comes in handy when either just blowing anything out of any gaps out of the carpet, even vents. You blow all the bullshit out of the vents, give it a go scrub with your, uh, your detail brush and then just blast air through it. Good morning, it is Wednesday. This morning I've got to probably head down to James at Chop's Garage to pick up a BMW X1. I've agreed to buy through him. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of it because uh, Dan is off to Westbury today to pick up a Audi A5 that I forgot I bought. And yeah, when he gets back, they're probably him and maybe someone else is gonna have to go to Trowbridge to pick up our Ford or Seeker Ranger in order to get that back from it. It had a recall done on its uh, diff, I think. And that needs to come back and go to the body shop and then is going to its new owner. Um, so yeah, I might just get Jason, the editor, to whiz down to James with me and just get it done out of the way. I don't know why it stresses me out so much, just getting out of the business is, um, you know, being away from my desk and everything that's going on. Even if it's only going to be for a few hours, just uh, I'll deal with it better if I'm having a whole day off. It's weird. Yeah, so that will be the plan, I guess. The other thing is I also need to film Car of the Week for the Barometers channel. 
I just want to make sure I've got time for that, which I should have. Uh, and the guys need time to edit it. And get Thursday's video edited as well so there is a bit to do but we'll be alright anyway I'm wearing a shirt today everyone told me uh, not everyone but enough people in the comments said that I was looking basically like a right scruffy bastard in one of the previous weeklies because I had on a t-shirt that had some paint stains on it from when we were doing the container conversion and everyone says I should be suited and booted or or blinged out I think was one of the comments um, as the boss which I'm not very much of a bling man but um, I do prefer or I'd not prefer I do like being a bit smarter got my nice Ralph Lauren shirt on and I've even got some Chelsea boots on today rather than trainers but um, yeah when your hands on it's just pointless, just ruin it all. So, hey, we'll see how it goes for today. Just try and not get hands on with anything. Anyway, I'll catch up with you later, probably when we're on the road to go and see old Chopsy. Right, so we are on our way to Deepest Darkest Devon to go and see James at Chop's Garage. We've got a BMW X1 we're going to pick up. I did try and convince him to buy maybe our yellow Suzuki Swift because he'd made noises about that before. Um, just so I could have driven down there on my own to save time because we're all flat out. There's 101 things going on. Um, but he didn't go for it. So uh, I've got Jason, our new videographer editor, with us. So we're going to drive down be quite interesting to go down and see James because I've never actually seen his garage in person before. Check it out, grab our car, head back, hopefully without uh, taking up too much time. So it's only about an hour's drive. It's not too bad, really. We'll see you when we get there and we'll check out Chop's Garage. See, I just noticed on it as well, going around it, which means the owner must have been quite... This is trust, isn't it? I haven't even looked at it. Just he's, um, he's put new uh, backing plates. It's, it looks like it's got a new disc on the front. It looks like it's got a new backing plates all around it as well. Do we reenact for the subscribers why dealers do trade deals? Do we reenact why, why we would trade a car and make maybe £500 versus retailing the car and making, say, £1,200? OK. What happens is I pick up a phone and I go, Joe, I've got an X1, this is the registration, this is the mileage, I reckon this is what the retail on auto trader is, I can offer it to this. And Joe looks at him and goes, go on in mate, if it's alright, I'll have that. Yeah. And then he turns up and he goes... Don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. He pays me and he drives it away. Um, and that's why, I mean, I have to apologise for this, we can blame Adrian at A&K Van Services for somehow managing to get mud up a car whilst on a trailer. I'm not sure he's managed to do that. But yeah, it looked like all the backing plates were brand new on it. All the way around. Look at the front ones as well. Oh, yeah. What tyres he gone for? He's going for decent tyres. Oh. Fun one, I was about to say, that's the second parcel shelf that I've seen wrapped up on a back seat, and I remember now it's from the video you sent me. Yeah. It was the same one. Yeah, so he bought a parcel shelf for us, which is ideal, isn't it? I assume it's got a tow bar on it somewhere. I thought the same thing, but I couldn't see one. Maybe they just had the wing mirrors on because... Yeah, I thought exactly the same thing. I thought, well, there'll be a tow bar on the back of the original. Won't be long before, this is a, so a X1, it's a two litre diesel, won't be long before someone's in the uh, comments about talking about timing chains yes. and what a mistake it was. Sure, yeah. and well, should we cold start it? Let's do it. I think I cold started it before, I think I started it also. So we'll have a little listen. So always cold start your diesel, people. But that's what you got to do as soon as someone does that. Why is it hot? <laughs> uh, start it up, squeezing that. It's been very well looked after, it's got a really good history on it. Smashing! Yeah, the front seat is looking right in here. I don't know, it's a second place. Someone's got that done something with the brakes, haven't they? Yeah. That looked good on your forecourt, wouldn't it? Sure will. I just chickened out because I thought it was too high a sale price for me, to be fair. And finance scares me, I don't like that idea of finance. 
I'm surprised how many people want to turn up and they won't want finance on that. Or if they do, they can go to bloody, you know, whatever. And no, I don't think it'll, I don't think probably it would have been a hard seller either. Being a white offensive, is it? It's decent spec. The M Tech, or whatever that is, what's they called? No, it's not M Sport. What do they call the leather though? It's not leather, is it? It's oh, um, Dakota or something. Oh, nice. Dakota leather. Oh, it's, yeah, I don't know, perforated and... It's got to be automatic as well on one of these, isn't it, really? Yeah. All the older ones, if you had the manual, they had a really horrible knocking transfer cases. I didn't even know diesel, mate. Oh, I noticed that. That's right, Jason needs to get some in our insignia as well, so... It's not as far out in the sticks here as you make it out to be, you know? It is. Make it out is, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right out in the stick. No, it's not. It's not hard to get to at all, to be honest. Yeah, the place I did consider buying was up the road for me is uh, two more narrow country lanes. So this one's a bit easier to get to, isn't it? And to be honest, if you need to come from Taunton or Exeter, it's not Do you know good. what I'm going to do? I'm going to park it out the front of your place on a nice little angle. Yeah. I'm going to take a nice picture. And I'll put it on my Instagram story and be like, could James have sold this from his garage? Yeah, OK. And it'll look spot on. Do you want to clean the front end off? Or you no. Uh, okay. No, no, it'll be fine. Okay. Right, next one acquired. Chop's Garage visited, he's there filming us as we leave, so if you haven't checked out Chop's Garage, then uh, you'll see me leaving in this car with my number, what was it, tray plate flapping about, it would seem, on the back. Always the way, isn't it? Ends up there, spending too long chatting away. Always happens. Right, he's left us 32 mile range. Might just about do us to be honest. So it all seems pretty nice. This thing's got lovely paint on it. Wants a little valet, but nothing too crazy. Uh, we've got a dog guard to take out, which is well, a difficult one, isn't it? It's probably quite an expensive addition. That but do you want to advertise that it's had dogs in here? So it doesn't really matter, it doesn't smell doggy at all. And there's a few like wet dog nose marks on one of the rear windows, but other than that, it looks all right. It's got what was it warning me about? I think it's warning me about fuel. Oh, we got the parcel shelf, which is wrapped up in plastic, but they obviously kept it in their garage because they've had the dog in there. So that's there. So, looks quite a nice thing, this, really. And by the time we get back, Dan should be back from Aston Barkley Westbury with a nice Audi A5. In fact, I did see you sent me a WhatsApp message saying it was lovely, but being out on the road, I haven't had a chance to actually read it. But, you know, it's better that than getting a message saying absolute pile of crap. So, an hour to get back. I spent way longer than I expected to, um, but it was nice having a catch up, to be fair. So, quarter to one, we should be back by two o'clock at the latest. Hopefully, by the time we get back then as well, our two valeters who went off this morning running a couple of different errands, including going to Trowbridge, Wales to pick up our Seeker Ranger that was uh, at the Ford there having a recall done. As I've probably, I feel like I've said about 800 times now. Uh, that's it, I'm gonna leave you there because I'm waffling. I will see you back at the garage. Uh, why is it every time I go out in the car somewhere and I think, oh, I could get someone to go, but I won't, I'll go myself. We are now in standstill on the M5 again. Let me show you. Uh, there was some warnings of traffic. Um, but, oh, it's... So on my phone, which I'm using my sat nav, it was saying seven minute delay and it had orange ahead of us. Then it went red. Then it was saying 18 minute delay. And it dropped down again to 14 minute delay and now it's kind of reduced, well let me show you. We're a standstill on the thing, so don't you know call the police on me as if I give a sh Yeah, it's now oh it's gone it's gone up to five minutes now. Don't really know. Next one, so we're coming up to Taunton, so we're just before the Taunton junction, so there's no way of getting off. Probably should have put fuel in. Says I've got 21 miles fuel range, which should be more than enough, but uh and how long we're sat in traffic. The car dealer podcast is keeping me company. We could be seeing some movement.
the Alpina. I've been a massive fan of Alpinas. Ah, dealer chat with Daniel Horner, who owns Octane Finance. These people. You'll be able to watch that now, I imagine. Probably by the time this comes out. Uh, right, are they polishing our disco? Hopefully. Lovely. I don't know, though. I can't That's see the rules. <laughs> Right, yeah, I'm going to wet myself because I've been in a thing for an hour and a half so I better go and do that and then we'll see what's happening with the day. Put a few more fluids first. Bargain. Price drop. It's now a great price on Auto Trader. I don't know why that's sold. Apart from the fact it's really yellow. <laughs> yeah, lovely. We did this. That was you, I bet. It was that much. It was even more than that before. Hopefully, that'll do the trick. Hopefully, let's see if we can sell the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Hopefully, I've got two people interested in it. One a couple with a 56 plate old Discovery. A bit scary, but it's not worth much. And they want a tow bar fitted, which will cost them 800 quid. 800 quid? Well, for a detachable one. Hi there, it's Jason at Vera Motors. Hello, mate. Uh, so, yeah, Land Rover Discovery. Sport. Uh, we got it in. It's the the noise that was it was making was there's like a tensioner and a guide pulley on the same kind of bracket, and they suffer. We've done a couple of them, so we've got them on order. They'll be here this afternoon. Uh, I rang the tow bar people. Um, I'll say there's two companies I've used in the past. One like a an online thing, and one local in Somerset. Uh, and the Somerset one is actually a bit cheaper. They were about. I can't remember the exact prices, but they're about £600 for um, fixed and about £800 for uh, detachable. Um, they said, have a look underneath the vehicle because sometimes they do have like the frames and the, the, the necessary bits and pieces. Uh, so I did, and it isn't there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. If, let's say you had a problem, if you, the first thing you'd, I'd say is phone us. And generally, I answer the phone, and I don't want to be moaned at by customers with problem cars. So I say, just get it in, get a price, let us know what it is, get it fixed. So we would, we would definitely look after you. But I appreciate, you know, you, you are a long way away. But I'll leave you to ponder. But yeah, we would, we would look after you in the event of an issue. Definitely, that's that's our number one thing if things go wrong. I'll leave it with you. Yeah, love your job. Cheers. Ta da. Bye bye. Car. Well, I was going to maybe be cheeky and see if Joe wanted to uh, swap, obviously with cash on top, but this is gorgeous. Love this. Yeah, man. If I had money. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if I had off money, I would just sort of just go, yeah, you know what, here you go, Joe, here's 10, 10 grand, and I'll, I'll give you my Audi as well. But yeah, this is, this is something special. I do like this, and it's comfy. These seats are very comfy. Yeah, I like this. I was confused at first though, because I was like, 
Is this an S or an S line? Oh, yeah. Obviously, it's got the S line badge on it, but this is an S steering wheel. Oh, you notice it. So there's an S. Yeah, no, I, I, I do like this. I do like this. Yeah. I reckon I might have a talk with the missus and just go, go on, babe, you buy this one. And then we'll just have two Audis on the driveway. For the sake of making this look better for the video, I did want to, I will get a new, what's it? But. Plasti dip. Getting carried away now. I can already hear the people typing in the comments. I know, yeah, I should have done that bit there. Budger! Uh, the guy, one of your fans rang about um, a site, Shifted Metals, um, sorry, a site in Western. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've seen it. It's the old Simon Stone site. It looks like it's back up for a. It's massive and expensive. So it passes the message. Which one's Simon Stone? Uh, you know where you go to Not Asda. The one that's like half of a dealership. It's like a round corner. That's it. With a yeah. Glass showroom. Yeah, and it's got like it's, it's now become a charity center. superstar and a superstore yeah, yeah, and an yeah. MOT center. I, I yeah. presume they, I know Nathan who's in that carnation, the little MOT place. But I'm guessing that he'll be turfed out. But I don't know. Yeah. If you Google it, you'll this see. This whole place was called Carnation. No, only that little bit there. Just a tiny little insert. No, not, it's... not if you go off of... Um... Oh, actually, no, tell a lie. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It was... Yeah, sorry. You're... He's a different business. 15994? That sounds right, yeah. Yeah. From right. Octane, who... Same company we just had on the podcast. Oh, right. Wonderful. System works. All right, brilliant. Try it on it. Try it on it. what I'm doing now. Seeing as we've got to do a, like, contact wash... Shall I put trim on the plastic bit first? Um, no, I'd wait until after. There's yeah, no point yeah, putting makes... some on because it won't stick as well. You end up pressure washing it next time for sure. Probably pressure wash. Silicone stuff onto the bodywork as well. <coughs> well, hopefully we've just sold our supposedly 500 quid worth of Chip Express tuning stuff. Oh, yeah. It's probably worth 100 quid. The thing is, it only fits that BMW. There's hundreds of them on eBay for about 100 quid. 40% more power, apparently. Yeah, right. Woo. <laughs> more power. So before, 190, after 225. 400 newton meters of torque, after 550. Right. 395 reduced from 495. Can be reprogrammed if changed view. But yeah, I mean, look, there's one for 50 bucks. <laughs> 99.95, free postage, 36 pence to sell it. Plus, obviously, whatever they charge us, which would be a lot of money. I mean, it's cheap. It costs us less than a turn to post it. Was it to say free postage? Yeah, there we go. So, it's better than chucking it in the bin. Somebody will want it, I'm sure. About his M something rather four three five. Hang on, what was it? A four three five D BMW twenty fourteen three litre diesel. It's worth about six grand to us, but it's got a lot of miles on it. So I'm going to text him. Looks a nice car. Probably not for us. 
except as a part exchange worth about 6k to trade in and then 9 to 9.5 advertised. So you're just having the... Um... Not normally, but if I'm not buying it, at least, you know, he's not thinking I'm undercutting him or, you know, do him any yeah. disservice. Normally, yeah, I'd say if we're not, but if we're buying it, I wouldn't. Unless they're like, oh, it's worth £8,000. Like, where are you going to sell it for nine? <laughs> <laughs> Which does happen quite often. Yeah. Probably not for the Zexas bike exchange. It's worth about 6 k to trade in and nine to nine and a half advertised. So that's one person dealt with. Next one. We have the Range Rover SVR. It's got to advertise for 19,500. Special vehicle, something or other. So, would you be interested against the Porsche 987? Yes. I can't find the registration number anyway. Is that Auto Trader? Yeah, that's Auto Trader. So, yeah. let's see if we can find it and I can read the registration number. Right, so 19,500. Well, it ain't there. <laughs> let's try SV. And that's it. That's all there is. Okay, forget that. Um, Oh, it's an SVR conversion. Oh, <laughs> so it's not it's an not SVR. An SVR. <laughs> it's probably not worth anything like 19 grand to us. Bugger it. Right, so it's not there. Barra Motors, Jason speaking. Oh, I'm very well, thank you. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I like Visit the Chat. I think it works well. I uh, don't have any issues with it. I can't think of any major drastic changes that I would want. Uh, we, uh, you've asked several times, but it, I, I think, what's the cost of it? I knew it was, I thought it was quite expensive. Well, not expensive, but not something that we... Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about it. I'm aware of it, but not at the moment. I'd say we're considering, you know, we're looking at saving money on advertising. So if I say to Joe, let's spend more, uh, you know, the, the, on something that we've, we've thought about and rejected before, I can't see him can't see him going for that and I'm not really sure I mean there's always benefits there's always benefits to advertising more but obviously we've got to look after the pennies I don't know yet it's had a new thermostat now give it a bit of a long road test and see a straighting car huh. And there's no signs of it opening. You see, we normally get a drag mark on them. It's a bit weird because uh, the earlier ones, when I was with Volkswagen, they went over to the electronic thermostat, and the piece in here used to snap. So the thermostat used to pop out and go at a bloody angle. But they they would throw a fault. So I'm not getting any faults now. I mean, I've changed one of the auxiliary pumps because even though when I tested it, it was working, and it finally came up with a fault saying pump stuck. So even though I can go on the diagnostic computer and activate it, been activated, I took it out and I took it apart. I had water ingress onto the PCB. So, put a new one in it. I thought I gave it a good, I did about a 40 mile road test. In all, I went all the way down to junction 24, back again up the motorway, absolutely fine. And then it, water dropped again. Oh, now you turn up after all the work's done. So, uh, chap come in. Jason will probably tell you more because I just walked away so I didn't really want to hear it but I think Dan's uh, upsetting the locals by daring to unload his trailer on a public road but it happens to be across somewhere they can see it from their house so they're disgusted and they sort of say can you not do it there and he, I think Dan said 
well, why not? It's a, not a not double yellows, and you don't own the road. He's had to come over and tell us. Yeah, this is where I insert the bit. You know, James Alford on my podcast. I hate people. Just get a grip. You don't own the road, do you? Looking at uh, it's, it's in a boxster, looking at our boxster and our Cayman. I can guarantee you if we went and said, Oh, are you interested? I think I can help you with it. would been like, No, mine's nicer. I just thought I'd look at them because I've got a Porsche, or I'd look at a Porsche. Could be wrong. Upset the locals. Fine, I'll go see your boss. Right, okay, you go and do oh, that. Jason, so. yeah, no, he was like, I'll go and see your boss. I was like, Okay, mate, that's fine. Where else is he? I'm down the past your dad's house yeah. on a completely open stretch of road and yes, I'm opposite his driveway, but he, can, what? he can drive out of the drive. So I literally turned around and went, I'm unloading a vehicle, mate, and I'll be as long as I'm going to be. Um, and he was like, oh, it's very inconvenient. I can't get out of my drive. So I looked across and went... Well, and your license in, you twat. I can get out of that driveway very easily myself, sir. Stop with you. And so he's like, oh, well, I was just asking. And I was like, well, you can no, carry you on. You were telling me before. And then, Fuck off. Then uh, he's like, well, I'm going to go and see your boss. I'm like, well, you're more than welcome to. He's done 20 miles. And, um, what's it, but there's no issue here. Yeah. Bash. So um, off, off he went, storm yeah, out the road. I, I drove tonight. Just and to then he, um, he saw me then, yeah. and he tweeted yeah. me yeah. as I drove past. Yeah. So I looked at him and I was like, the right. I'm quite, quite happy leave it there for another hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it outside and we'll let it. Very interesting drive. Yeah. Yeah. I drove it up there on the motorway. Yeah. Right. Uh, I come back uh, the next one is the Range Rover that you've just brought in. I'm going to put the. It's I think it's the active anti roll bar at the front. Uh, the front if we can fix it, wonderful. I'll yeah. order one next week. Yeah, I wonder if it's those pipes that we had on the other one that went down. It's not at the back. No, they were the front, They were corroded. So the really? one that went down. The first one that they, th- they told me it was the EGR. Pipe and then it ended up being the crossover pipe. That one, remember? Yeah, yeah. Back, back that, we've got that one, yeah. yeah. But this is the older version of the Range Rover. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said, this guy said it's the anti, active anti roll bar, but it might be the pipes leading to it. Alright, so have a look, see what you think. If we can do it, right. I mean, what I would say is just because obviously those pipes, alright, they're 400 quid from Range Rover, but they're in pipes. And there's a pipe making place in Western that do bloody good work. We might be able to, you never know. If we can get them off and get them remade somewhere for 50 quid. I'll go up and have a look. Have a look, see what you think. But yeah, I've, I've used them before, they're brilliant. money coming in hopefully. Uh, right, a cup of tea, do you need one? He's cleaning it now. I want to give him at least two or three hours because it's quite grubby inside, needs a good clean inside. Um, absolutely perfect, I'll see you then. Thanks Paul, see you later mate. Ta da, bye. Uh, the Ranger. Oh, I need to check the 25 quid piece for the V62. Actually, no, I don't. I'm going to do it on here and see if it works. If it doesn't, I need to check the 25 quid. Well, we have a finance application on the Discovery Sport. <laughs> yeah. Bought loads of smart things. Two. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> They're highly rated and they seem to have a reasonable margin in them. So, you know, I'm not fussy, I'm not biased. I'll just buy whatever, whatever sells well. We've yet to see whether they actually sell well or not, but, you know. 
after uh, Liam and Andy sorted out our other one, Transformation Lads, that sold pretty quick. So. I think smart cars are generally good news. They're fairly different. Yeah, I think they're good news as long as I don't buy the ones I used to. When I, yeah. when I was here to start off with, I was like, oh, that corner, I could get <laughs> eight, smart cars, eight smart cars in there, and I bought them for like 750 quid, wanting to sell them for 1500 quid. Oh, just. Yeah. They were all great, they would all go. It was just the warranty stuff. Yeah. And then you got a car that's got like 300, 400 pound margin in it, and it needs a new gearbox, yeah. whatever. What happened with the um, this ML? Yeah, we're gonna send it to auction. But what was the, it? Needs like a speed sensor in the gearbox or something, and no one wants to do it. Yeah, that seems to be the story. Don't know if she was looking at it, but yeah, you, you did ring around a few places, a couple of places. Let's go for a mini. Trades nine three four two, retail thirteen. Smileage sixty nine seven hundred. Was this car with more? Uh, no, only quite for the website and sale. Uh, 61 out of 100, it's not bad for a sporty mini. Fancy, isn't it? That no, that's not it, that's just one I kicked no, up on it. Cooper works one, isn't it? It is a Cooper works, yeah. But all the bells and whistles. Right up my street. Because if you get one with all the bloody jasmine tyres on the side, I don't know if that'll put people off or not. Nice well, if, it's, if it's from the factory, it won't. People will want yeah, it. I know, but, like, Something like that is going to be a more limited market, I would suggest. I mean, it looks flash, all right, but it's going to be a more limited market than maybe something like that, which is a bit more. Uh, maybe. With all, you know, if it was black and like, gunmetal yeah. grey. Yeah, I don't know. If it was a standard car, oh, if you were God, talking yeah. about an Aigo, a plain <laughs> yeah. black one versus with a load of speed stripes and everything on it, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. But if, it, if someone's really looking for yeah. it, John Cooper works. Yeah. They probably want the chappiest thing. They want to look flash, don't they? Yeah. It's, either, it's either a young lad or girl, or it's midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. Or an old lady that has been what she Yeah, or oh, yeah, an old lady who just thinks the yellow bits are nice. Doesn't realise she's buying like three or four power monster. <laughs> right, so end of the week. Uh, it's Saturday. Once again, we've got a live draw this afternoon. I was just giving away a. Uh, it will be annoyed with me now because I probably didn't publicise this very well, but I'm giving away a, a dash camera just for the hell of it, just to say thanks to all the subscribers. So that was on our Feel Good competition, so it'll be too late for that now. But you will be able to find out on the Feel Good competition thing. And if, let me know in the comments if you want me to do it again. I'll do something again and we'll do another giveaway. Um, so we need to discuss best car bought, best car sold, um, biggest win, biggest loss or headache or whatever. Um, Best car bought. We've had we've bought quite a lot actually. Some of which may go on the main channel. Therefore, I won't make it car of the week because then we'd be doubling up on videos. Um, it's a tricky one. Best car sold. Let's think of best car sold first. Uh, what have we sold? What have we sold? I don't know. Things have been ticking over again though. I'm woefully prepared for this end of the week roundup. To be honest, um, let's have a wander down and we'll see what we've. Got what was up here sold earlier? Freelander, yeah, we sold that like two weeks ago, I think. Um, it's just been waiting around for paintwork and stuff, I guess. Um, best car bought now, best car bought, I think, should either be oh, do you know what? It's tricky actually. We got three options here Audi A5 special edition. Audi A6 S-Line, lovely jubbly thing. That one's a petrol, that one's a diesel. And then round here, we've also got the BMW X1 as well that we got from James at Chops Garage. We have done an Audi kind of executive saloon before, haven't we, for a Car of the Week video on the YouTube channel, on the Barrow Motors YouTube channel, I should say. So let's say the BMW X1, let's go and have a look at that. So yeah, we picked this up from James at Chops Garage, kind of like a trade seal, trade seal, trade sale through him. Uh, and it's up for £18,000 on 63,300 miles. It's not the sort of car I'd ever really sort of look at, but it is very nice. It's very nice to drive. Surprisingly, it does feel quite small and almost hatchback-like for what is a small SUV. So we'll say that is best car bought, and we will do a video on that on the Barometers channel. So by the time you're watching that, this, that or this, by the time you're watching this, that, 
will be out on the Barry Motors channel and I will link it in the description below. Then we need to think about best car sold and I'm going to have to have a look at the board. So this, that's, that's going to be the biggest headache for this week is just how busy I've been. I've just felt very, very stressed. Right, we've got customers in there just doing their handover with Jason for this mocker, which is going out. Um, so, best car sold, I don't know if it'll be here because it might have gone off for a little bit of bodywork or something, but it's the hybrid Honda CRV. Um, we had that as car of the week on a previous week. I'm fairly certain it's not here. Might want a little bit of bodywork or wheels or something, I can't remember, but it's not gone just yet. I know that because we're taking another CRV in part exchange, a diesel one, I imagine. So stay tuned for that when that comes in. Then, yeah, biggest headache. I've just been really busy. I am trying to employ an admin assistant slash office assistant, and I put a job advert out on Indeed, and we have been inundated with people. The problem is I'm too busy to do the things I'm doing, so now I'm too busy to look at the people that could help me with the things that I'm too busy doing. It's a vicious circle. But my, my job for this afternoon, on this Saturday, we finish at two, we've got a live draw to do in a minute, we'll get that Bosch out of the way, then I'm gonna go and sit down in my office down the farm and I'm gonna go through them in a bit of peace and quiet about the phone ringing, about people asking me for stuff. And then hopefully we can get someone in who can help with that, with emails and phone calls and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that'd be good. So biggest win. Um, what do you think, Toby? You got any thoughts on this? I really should prepare for these, but I never do. You falling over? Toby fell over and cracked his camera. Have you got a shot? I think he might have a shot he can input of that. He fell over and luckily his camera has a like exoskeleton on it. You've seen this camera before, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the exoskeleton thing protected his camera. It wouldn't focus, but then in true technological expertise sense, he just turned it off and back on again and it was fine. So yeah, that was a win. Um, we've still got Toby's camera. Yeah, I guess that will be it. I mean, another win is I had a tidy up of the forecourt here uh, today because I've done another Saturday stock take, which you'll be able to find by this point on the Barrow Motors channel. So if you want to see a full tour, of everything that's in stock. New things like we didn't mention, like really that Kia Stinger 3.3 V6 turbo beast thing should be car of the week for really, shouldn't it? But it's yet to be cleaned and I wanna do a video on that on this channel. And if I'd done that, then we wouldn't have be able to really, it would make, wouldn't make much sense to do one on the Barometers channel as well. So keep an eye out for a video coming with that because I did a straight swap on that for another car and it's a very weird car to have swapped from one to the other I think but you can make your own judgment when you see that video anyway as per usual I'm waffling now so thank you so much for watching hopefully this has been a longer episode I think we've getting Toby and Jason both on board now we're getting weekly footage and I'm getting some as well in the car and whatever so hopefully while we were busy and the episodes were shrinking down because of the footage we had Hopefully they can start coming back out again now. Um, some people will complain they're too long. Some people will complain they're not long enough. We can't win. So we're going to try and stick to around about an hour. And that, that will be that. Don't forget, I am raffling off my BMW 730D. So you can win that for a pound or even less. You can buy 20 tickets. You'll get 10 for free. Use the code TOBY10. You'll get 10% off. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then now is the time to do it, because as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch, which is very nice indeed. Sister company of Rolex, I have you know, completely free. As soon as we hit 100,000, we'll get everyone a free entry on feelgoodcompetitions.com, and we will draw a winner. In fact, I can probably input a picture here now of Martin Shaw, who won our Tag Heuer when we hit 75,000 subscribers. Uh, he has now got back from his holiday, got back to his watch. He's loving life. And we've got a picture of him with his watch. Lovely, so I'm not just making it up. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get back to work. I'll see you next week. What's that sound like?
broke the magnet. Yeah, it's made it into like a cutting tool.